a very good afternoon to one and all myself dr rishabh gupta and in today's session we will be understanding the computation of working capital in ms excel so let's begin from the following data compute the duration of operating cycle raw material it's 20000 rupees in year 1 and 27000 rupees in year 2 work in progress 14000 rupees and 18000 rupees finished goods 21000 rupees in year 1 and 24000 rupees in year 2 purchases is being given cost of goods sales sales debtors creditors you need to assume 360 days in a year for the computational purpose based upon this information i need to compute the operating cycle so let's begin now in this case raw material is 20000 for year 1 and 27000 for year 2 work in progress is 14000 for year 1 and 18000 for year 2 similarly finished goods is 21000 and 24000 respectively for purchases it is 96000 in year 1 and 135000 in year 2 Similarly, cost of goods sold is one lakh forty thousand in year one and one lakh eighty thousand in year two. Sales one lakh sixty thousand and two lakh in year two. For the debtors, it is thirty two thousand and fifty thousand. For the creditors, sixteen thousand in year one and eighteen thousand in year two. and we have assumed 360 days in a year now let's begin first of all i need to compute the raw material for the computation of raw material period the formula is average raw material divided by total purchase into 360 now in this case the inventory period or the raw material period will be equals to raw material represented by c3 that is 20000 rupees divided by purchases represented by c6 multiplied by 360 that is multiplied by c11 and press enter it comes out to be 75 days similarly for year 2 it will be raw material divided by purchases into 360 this will give you 72 days The next is the calculation of creditors period. The formula is average creditors divided by total purchase multiplied by 360. Now in this case, the creditors are 16,000 for year one divided by total purchase that is 96,000 multiplied by 360. It comes out to be 60 days. Same way, I can calculate for the year two as well. Equals to Eighteen thousand divided by one lakh thirty-five thousand multiplied by three sixty. That is forty-eight days. The next is the calculation of work in progress period. The calculation of work in progress. The formula is average work in progress divided by total cost of goods sold into three sixty. So equals to the work in progress for year one is fourteen thousand. Divided by one lakh forty thousand into three sixty, it comes out to be thirty six days. Similarly, for year two, it will be eighteen thousand divided by one lakh eighty thousand multiplied by three sixty. That is thirty six days for year two as well. For the finished goods period, the formula is average finished goods divided by total cost of goods sold into three sixty. So in this case, the finished goods is twenty-one thousand divided by cost of goods sold one lakh forty thousand multiplied by three sixty. That is fifty-four days. Same way, I can calculate it for the year two as well. Twenty-four thousand divided by one lakh eighty thousand multiplied by three sixty. That is forty-eight days. And finally, I need to calculate the debtors period. 
द फॉर्मलाइज एवरेज डायरेक्टर्स डिवाइडेड बाय टोटल सेल्स इनटू 360 सो द डायरेक्टर्स इन दिस केस इज 32000 डिवाइडेड बाय टोटल सेल्स व्हिच इज 160000 मल्टीप्लाइड बाय 360 रिप्रेजेंटेड बाय C11 दैट इज 72 डेज सिमिलरली फॉर द ईयर 2 इट विल बी 50000 divided by total sales that is 2 lakh multiplied by 360 that is 90 days now i need to calculate the net operating cycle the formula is inventory period plus account receivable period minus account payable period so let's begin the inventory period includes raw material period plus work in progress period plus finished goods period plus the account receivable period that is 72 days represented by c18 minus the creditors period it comes out to be 177 days same way i can drag it for the year 2 as well and it comes out to be 198 days so we can see that there is an increase in the net operating cycle from 177 days to 198 days so this increase in the net operating cycle is arising because of debtors taking longer time to pay that is 18 days similarly creditors receiving payment earlier it is equals to 60 days minus 48 days that is 12 days the next another reason is lower finished goods turnover lower finished goods turnover it is equals to 54 days minus 48 days that is 6 days the next reason is lower raw material turnover which is equals to 75 minus 72 now both this information the increase in the operating cycle will be the increase in operating cycle will be equals to 18 days plus 12 days minus 6 days minus 3 days that is 21 days so there is an increase in the net operating cycle by 21 days because of these reasons listing here now let's focus on question 2 xyz limited supply the following information sales and production for the year is 69000 finished goods in store 3 months raw material in store 2 months consumption production process 1 month credit allowed by creditors 2 months selling price per unit rupees 50 raw material 50% of selling price direct wages 10% of selling price and overheads 20% of selling price 20% of sales are on cash basis and credit sales allowed to customer for one month overheads include rupees 5 as depreciation there is regular production and sales cycle and wages and overheads accrue evenly wages are paid in the next month of accrual and overheads are paid 15 days in arrears materials are introduced in the beginning of production cycle work in progress involves use of full units of raw material in the beginning of manufacturing process and other conversion costs equivalent to 50% you are required to calculate the working capital requirement on cash cost basis so let's begin now in this case the sales and production for the month is 69000 divided by 12 that is 5750 units 
the monthly production is 5750 finished goods in store it's 3 month finished goods in store is 3 months raw material in store 2 months production process takes 1 month time credit allowed by customer is 2 selling price is rupees 50 raw material is rupees 25 direct wages rupees 5 overex is 10 rupees and the overex excluding depreciation is 5 rupees we know that based upon this selling price of rupees 50 i can easily calculate my raw material which is 50 percent of the selling price similarly direct wages is 10 percent and overex is 20 percent let me mention it 50 percent of selling price similarly for the direct wages it is 10 percent of selling price and for the overheads it is 20 percent of selling price now in this numerical my cash cost will be equal to raw material plus direct wage plus 5 rupees over x excluding depreciation that is 35 rupees now let's calculate the working capital we know that the formula for the working capital is current assets minus current liability first and foremost i need to calculate my raw materials it's been given for the raw material it will be 5750 units multiplied by 2 months and multiplied by rupees 25 per unit so again it will be equal to 5750 units multiplied by 2 months again multiplied by rupees 25 it comes out to be 2 lakh 87500 now let's begin the computation of working capital we all know that the formula for the working capital is current assets minus current liability in this numerical first component of current assets is raw material it's been given that for computing my raw material it is 5750 units multiplied by 2 months multiplied by rupees 25 per unit let me put it into the excel function equals to 5750 units multiplied by 2 multiplied by rupees 25 that is 2 lakh 87500 now i need to compute my work in progress which includes raw material wages and overheads so again for the work in progress of raw material it's 5750 units multiplied by rupees 25 per unit let me put it into the excel function equals to 5750 represented by c30 multiplied by production process of one month multiplied by rupees 25 that is 1 lakh 43750 for the wage it is again 57 five zero units multiplied by one month multiplied by rupees five per unit and multiplied by 50 percent complete for the wages it will be equal to five thousand seven fifty units multiplied by one month multiplied by direct wages of rupees 5 multiplied by 0 0.50 similarly for the override also the formula remains the same 5750 units multiplied by one month multiplied by cash overheads of rupees 5 per unit and multiplied by 50 percent so equals to 5750 multiplied by one month multiplied by 
five per unit and multiplied by 50. That is 14,375. For the finished goods, it will be 5750 units multiplied by rupees 35 per unit. So for the finished goods, it will be 5750 units multiplied by 3 months multiplied by rupees 35 per unit. So equals to 5750 multiplied by 3 months multiplied by the cash cost of rupees 35 and press enter. It comes out to be 6,3750. For the debtors, it will be 5,750 units multiplied by 1 month again multiplied by rupees 35 per unit and multiplied by credit sales which is 80% of total sales 80% of sales so for the debtors it will be equals to 5750 units multiplied by the credit sales allowed to customer of one month multiplied by cash cost of rupees 35 per unit and multiplied by 0 0.80 it comes out to be 1,61,000. The total current assets will be equal to sum. Select a range of value. Bracket close and press enter. It comes out to be 12,24,750 rupees. Now let's focus on the calculation of current liabilities. For the creditors, it will be 5,750 units multiplied by 2 months multiplied by rupees 25 per unit so equals to 5750 multiplied by 2 months multiplied by 25 rupees and press enter it comes out to be 287500 rupees For the outstanding wages, it will be 5750 units multiplied by 1 month multiplied by rupees 5 per unit. So, equals to 5750 multiplied by 1 month multiplied by rupees 5 per unit. That is 28,750. For the outstanding overheads, it will be 5750 units multiplied by 15 days multiplied by rupees 5 per unit. So it will be equals to 5750 units multiplied by 0 0.50 multiplied by rupees 5 per unit that is 14,375 the total current liabilities will be equals to sum select this range of value and bracket close that is 3,30,625 the net working capital will be equals to current assets represented by C51 minus current liabilities represented by C57 and press enter. The amount comes out to be 8,94,125 rupees. So that's all from my side. Have a nice day. Thank you.